Hello and welcome to another video by Lord Infinite. I wanted to make a short video on explaining a little trick and me doing some research on the internet. Basically, I broke Epic Games. It does not want to cooperate with me. I, uh, I had games like uh, Grand Theft Auto V here. I had that set to my SSD so that way I wouldn't have to have any load times or anything. But other games that I don't care about load times, I had these set to my larger hard drive, uh, which is, uh, you know, regular platter drive, longer load times. It's not an SSD. And I was constantly coming back to Epic Games and finding that I don't have the game anymore. It wants me to install it. I can't just play it. Rocket League, I've had to install at least three times now. So I went and deleted all my folders that involved Epic Games on the SSD. I'm just not going to use it. I'm going to keep all my games on the larger hard drive because I don't want to sit here and be downloading stuff all the time. Some of us rich people don't have unlimited internet. Anywho... You see here that I have to reinstall Grand Theft Auto V. But if I go to the Epic Games folder that I've chosen, here's the game. That's 90 gigs I do not want to download again. I don't want to wait for it. It's there. It's not here. So what in the crap? I don't know how the launcher works. I'm sure somebody knows how to do programming. We'll eventually figure this out. Or Epic Games could fix their own crap. Either way, now when you do click on install, you will get this error. Directory must be empty. You can't install the game because it's already there. But if it's already there, how the heck does the launcher not see it? Brain hurts now. So, what we're going to do to fix this is we cancel that window, we open up the Epic Games, and we're going to rename this folder. I'm just going to put some random letters behind this, all right? That's not important. So, we come back here, go ahead and click Install. <gasps> oh, look, there's no folder named that. Fine. Go ahead and install. Please wait. We see... Downloads is starting to move. Give this about a minute or two. Let it uh, start, you know, getting a feel for some files uh, and write some information. You know, while it's doing this, kill it. Right in the middle of this download, just, well, probably not kill it directly. Go ahead and go back to your library. And it's at 1% installing. That's good enough. I'm going to pause that. Make sure that you kill Epic Game Stores. Exit it out. Get out of it. Done. All right. Now we take all these juicy, yummy 90 gigs worth of files, and we're going to copy them. I recommend copying because I just ran into an issue with the previous recording where I was trying to do the same thing with The Outer Worlds, and it didn't work. And I lost all the files, so I do have to re-download that. So you click paste. It's going to paste all this stuff in here. And Grand Theft Auto is a pretty big game, so this is going to take about 11 minutes. You, imagine, you think this is slow. Imagine what it would be like to re-download this whole thing. I'll be right back. And we're back with about 10 seconds left at 99%. Just waiting for that to finish up. And there we go. All done. So now I have two exact copies 
of Grand Theft Auto 5. Whoop-de-doo. That took way too long, but still a lot less than downloading it. Once you've completed that, go ahead and open your Epic Game Launcher. Sits here, does its little dance. Do, do, do. I go back to my library, and I'm going to resume this download. You see it's verifying? There is no download happening. All it's doing is it's reading the information on the disk. If this was done correctly. Uh, as I said before, I did this with Outer Worlds and uh, kind of failed. I ended up cutting the files and moving them over rather than copy-paste. I recommend copy-paste. You can always delete later. Anyways, this is just going to verify that all the files are there. Because the launcher is like, hey, I don't remember doing this. I got. Let me just check this real quick. I, I'm kind of drunk. That, I... I don't mean to make fun of any software developers of any kind, but really? People put games, especially like this one, that have ridiculous load times on SSDs. But buying a terabyte SSD is not feasible for a lot of people. And the SSD I have is a 512, or you call it 500 gigs. That fills up really fast. I mean, incredibly fast, especially when I got Steam games. I mean, look at Warzone. 250 gigs. I'm never going to put that game on an SSD. Because it's going to probably kill it. Just And the amount of download time that's all involved... I just, I would rather stick that on a platter drive. I mean, I got a two terabyte platter drive for 50 bucks from Western Digital. It's fine. I don't mind waiting a little bit extra for a drive that'll last me 10 years or more. As long as you keep them powered up at least once a year, you shouldn't have any data loss. Um... Yeah, you don't have as many problems. You can have mechanical failure, of course, with hard drives. But when you're looking at stuff like... See, I've got plenty of room on this drive. It's 2 terabytes. It's not an SSD. This one, after I took Grand Theft Auto off, I've actually got some room on here. I only have two games on here. It's like one of them Skyrim and actually what is what do we got here? Uh do 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 Steam apps uh common. Oh, I also I've got Doom, GTFO, Subnautica, Rainbow Six. I mean, yeah, okay, there's a few games on here, but uh I'm going to be filling up this hard drive really quickly because once I install all my mods for Skyrim, this I, I might have to uninstall other games. In either case, an SSD has limited read and writes. Eventually, it's going to die. That's unfortunate. With all SSDs, that's just how it works. You can look up Electron Lock when it comes to... Uh, how the uh, chips work and electricity flowing through them. Uh, basically, the simplest way to do it is you've got an electron going through a chip. It's either on or it's off, you know, ones or zero. Basically, every now and then, an electron goes in there and it gets stuck. It can't go anywhere. So when another electron comes in, it, it, it won't work. The idea is the bigger SSD you can buy, the longer the drive will last 
for you because you're spreading the workload across multiple chips. I was not fortunate enough to get a big SSD, so I stuck with the 500 one, which after software and stuff turns out to be 465 total. Yeah, that's not great, but god dang, just being able to format the drive so the computer can read it eats that much space. Hmm, something's wrong there. Other than that, if you ever have an SSD for, uh, or in my case, an NVMe drive for your C drive, do not put games on there. Because this has your Windows. It's a pain in the butt reinstalling Windows, all your documents, all that crap. Put games on here, you're just going to be reading and writing so much. If you ever get an NVMe drive, and you want to put games on it because you want super fast load times, by all means, go ahead and do it. Don't do it to your Windows dr drive or your operating system in case you're a Linux user. Man, I need to get off my lazy butt and learn Linux. I understand the concept, but I don't know the English for it. Anyways, and here's another food for thought while I'm doing this. This is a one terabyte drive I use for archive stuff. Basically, it's a backup of this drive that's not video game related. Uh, to give you a rough idea how much the video games, 753 gigs are cloned. I got some third party software to clone it over. You can, I, I didn't bother with a RAID setup. I'm not ready for that. And also a one terabyte versus a two terabyte that a RAID setup doesn't. Uh, it, it's it, it's not recommended because you'll run into a problem eventually. Um, this drive was made in 1999. I got it from someone else that gave me their computer that they were about to throw away. And it still works. This is a terabyte hard drive. It, this was exceedingly expensive when it was new. And it is old. I mean, maybe it wasn't 99. Now that I think about that, don't quote me on that. Um, I need to pull the drive out to actually look at it. But it is old. It's over uh, 12, 15 years. 20, I'm kind of skeptical on that. So don't listen to me. But still, just for this drive, still working, have not had any problems. Yes, it's been sitting on a shelf for a very long time. Either way, it still works. It doesn't have any mechanical problems because I haven't been reading or writing to it. It's just been existing. It did all the data that was on it before was absolutely gone because it wasn't powered on whatsoever. But a quick reformat and there it is. No problem. I just, uh, I recovering the data that was on it before, which I didn't care about. Not important. I didn't need it. So, if you're going to keep stuff for long periods of time, just make sure it's uh, plugged in. Uh, platter drives are great for archive, or archive storage. Stuff that you want to hang on for a very long time. But eventually, these things are written with magnets. The magnet either makes it north or south, and that's kind of the computer reads that as a one or a zero. Uh, you live on a massive globe that's a giant magnet, so if you leave these things sitting on a shelf, you will eventually lose the data on it. So make sure you have electricity powered to it every now and then to uh, do a little quick quick rewrite to it to make sure that the ones and zeros are pointed the right directions. You know, not too complicated. Well, I was hoping to uh, BS my way through the entire process here. We're still reading. You see, there's no writing. It's just reading. It's just making sure the data's there. And at the time we're talking, I'm basically... Uh, Granted, uh, I was watching a YouTube video for about 20 minutes, but you're talking about 90 gigs worth of 
information being copied over. Try doing that over the internet. I mean, most of the time, my download speeds are like 15 megabytes per second. So you can do the math on how long that would take for a 90 gigabyte game. This is one of those type of things like on your PlayStation, you kind of set it to download and then you go to sleep for the night and come back the next day. Oh, look, I BS my way all the way up to 99%. So once it's done verifying, it clicks over to 100%, makes you cry. Initializing. Initializing. Oh, dear goodness. Now what are we looking for? Okay, it's downloading a little bit of something. Mm, a little bit of something. Oh, look at that. Nobody's home right now. So I get the internet all to myself. But at least this won't take long. It's not much. Oh, dear me. Still, that's one gig. I worry too much. So it's just installing maybe some patch files or a couple files that weren't there. And boom, there we go. It's here. I can play it. I won't run into any more error codes because even, even launching it from here, like going into the file, find the .exe file, if that works for you, great. More power to you. But for some reason, I clicked this, it would open up the launcher, and it would say I didn't have the game. I, I don't know what to say about that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something. I am going to delete the copy since I don't need it anymore. And that's it. All done. Games are back. Took me about 45 minutes of my life to get all these games back. Uh, need to delete this. Never going to play it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. And have a good night.